Earlier this year, I led the Voyager project, and there's no game better than Minecraft for the infinite creative things it supports. Minecraft has 140 million active players, and Minecraft is so insanely popular because it's open-ended. It does not have a fixed storyline for you to follow, and you can do whatever your heart desires in the game. And when we set Voyager free in Minecraft, we see that it's able to play the game for hours on end without any human intervention. The video here shows snippets from a single episode of Voyager, where it just keeps going. It can explore the terrains, mine all kinds of materials, fight monsters, craft hundreds of recipes, and unlock an ever-expanding tree of skills. Voyager is able to not only master, but also discover new skills along the way. And we did not pre-program any of this. It's all Voyager's idea. And this, what you see here, is what we call lifelong learning, where an agent is forever curious and forever pursuing new adventures. Compared to AlphaGo, Voyager scales up massively on the number of things it can do, but still controls only one body in Minecraft. So the question is, can we have an algorithm that works across many different bodies? Enters Metamorph. It is an initiative I co-developed at Stanford. We created a foundation model that can control not just one, but thousands of robots with very different arm and leg configurations. We show that Metamorph is able to control thousands of robots to go upstairs, cross difficult terrains, and avoid obstacles. Compared to Voyager, Metamorph takes a big stride towards multi-body control. And now, let's take everything one level further and transfer the skills and embodiments across realities. Enters Isaac Sim, NVIDIA's simulation effort. The biggest strength of Isaac Sim is to accelerate physics simulation to a thousand x faster than real time. For example, this character here learns some impressive martial arts by going through 10 years of intense training in only three days of simulation time. So it's very much like the virtual sparring dojo in the movie Matrix. And what's more, Isaac Sim can procedurally generate worlds with infinite variations so that no two look the same. If an agent is able to master 10,000 simulations, then it may very well just generalize to our real physical world, which is simply the 10,000 and first reality. As we progress through this map, we will eventually get to the upper right corner, which is a single agent that generalizes across all three axes. And that is the foundation agent. And we train it by simply scaling it up massively across lots and lots of realities. I believe in a future where everything that moves will eventually be autonomous. And one day, we will realize that all the AI agents across WALL-E, Star Wars, Ready Player One, no matter if they are in the physical or virtual spaces, will all just be different prompts to the same foundation agent. I love that. If you don't know who's this, this is Dr. Jim Fan. He is a Stanford PhD and a senior research scientist at NVIDIA. By far, he's my favorite AI researcher from the entire space. I loved his talk. I loved the promise that he's bringing to the world. I loved how he was able to really develop from just like the Voyager model that was just in a in an environment that like Minecraft and how they were able to get it to this point where they took all of these skills, put it on a physical space or physical role and his vision for the future where everything around us is autonomous. Everything he talked about, if it tells us anything, tells us that we're getting closer and closer to artificial general intelligence. Autonomous agents that can handle everything on their own without the need for human training. So Voyager and Metamorph just push the boundaries of what is possible from an autonomous agent. As you can see, this is Voyager research paper right here. And here is Dr. 
gym fan and i just want to show you this small comparison between auto gpt which went viral at some point for the fact that it was able to handle so many tasks on its own but when they have tested it in minecraft at some point as you can see here it has stopped learning even voyager without a skill library as you can see here it came to some point when it has stopped learning completely but when they have equipped it with the skills library as you can see the line kept going up and up and it was what he said a lifelong learner so this right here shows us how it was able to handle the space in minecraft whenever it needed to learn something it would write the code as you can see here if the code is right and the task was completed successfully it would add the skill to the skill library that it has and if not it would refine the code and then test it again until it works and then the, when the task is done and the skill is gained then it adds it to the skill library and even with the metamorph they really were able to push boundaries for what's possible from physical standpoint in a robot so if auto gpt which impressed everybody and really so many people has benefited from it in very short time couldn't really continue learning i want you to imagine where voyager can take you if it's really available for everyone to use as of now and the fact that they were able to test these agents in different realities and different environments it's just a breakthrough but i want to flip the coin and take a look on the other side of the story part of his TED talk he showed an example of what Voyager has done when it felt hungry and it needed to get food how about we watch this together and then I'll tell you the other side the dark side of the story that he might not have mentioned in his talk let's work through an example together Voyager finds itself hungry and needs to get food as soon as possible it senses four entities nearby a cat a villager a pig and some wheat seeds Voyager starts an inner monologue. Do I uh, kill the cat or villager for food? Horrible idea. How about the wheat seed? I can grow a farm out of the seeds, but that's going to take a long time. So sorry, piggy, you are the chosen one. <laughs> and Voyager finds a piece of iron in its inventory, so it recalls an old skill from the library to craft an iron sword and starts to learn a new skill called hunt pig. And now we also know that, unfortunately, Voyager isn't vegetarian. Hey, if you're enjoying this video, don't forget to like it and subscribe to the channel to stay updated on the AI news world. So in this example, as you see, he showed us what the agent has done in the game. How about we talk about the other physical robot that he mentioned or the physical platform that they were able to transmit these information and these skills to, like Metamorph, for example. What if the robot didn't find the metal piece nearby and had to travel so it can get the piece of metal where then it can make a sword and get the pig. And along the way, when it was driving, it came across an intersection where there was a five years old kid and 85 years old elderly person. And for some reason, it was not able to control the vehicle that's driving. And it ended only with two options, whether to take out the kid or the elderly person. What would this agent do? And before you think a lot, let me tell you that such a question, unfortunately, doesn't have an answer as of today from any AI developer. That includes NVIDIA, Microsoft, Apple, Whole, anybody who's trying to develop anything in this space and why nobody has an answer because the only way to find an answer for such a question is two things first is to understand how the models or how the asian think make decisions and get to a final answer or finalizing a task that you ask it to do so as of today humans do not fully understand the neural nets due to the infinite number of possibilities and the more you dive in it the more you learn and the more you realize that it's kind of impossible to fully understand this and it is the same case for the robots the neural networks which most of these agents or most of these ai models are running on are extremely complicated and simply nobody cares to dig deep to fully understand how their models work or how their agents work all what they care about is the agent achieving what i want to, to achieve and the second way is to have full control on environment or have all scenarios that the robot can encounter or the agent can encounter listed and add restrictions on these environments or these scenarios so the agent does not know what you have blocked or what you had put an x on and in real life you will never be able to document everything possible. And that's what makes it kind of impossible to have an answer for such a question of will it hit the kid 
or had the elderly person. And even looking at Tesla, which is a leading company in the autonomous agents or the autonomous robots, despite the amount of data that they have from millions of Tesla vehicles encountering new scenarios every day, they do not have a fully autonomous vehicles. And when Elon Musk was asked about this, he said that we still have a long way to go and we might get there and we might not get there. So the fact that the leading company in this space is skeptic about having something or having a vehicle or having a robot or having an object that's fully autonomous, this is just a flag that even though when I love what they have done, the other side of the story is not as bright as they might think. But getting back to what Dr. Jim said, I believe that the breakthrough that they have done with Voyager, it's going to have amazing results from perspective of software. What do I mean by this? I mean, AutoGPT, which we have seen at very early point it stopped learning, already impressed the industry and many people have benefited from it. So bringing Voyager in a form of a product can be appealing for anybody who's looking to leverage more of AI agents. And again, a couple of weeks ago in CES, we have seen Rabbit R1 and with just basic tasks that it was able to do like booking flights and getting an Uber, it already triggered companies like Microsoft to think about joining this market. So these basic things that autonomous agents can do, it's just going to make us really benefit from AI agents. So to conclude this, they have made an amazing job. Really, if you have time and if you're the kind of person who would read the research paper, I'll leave the link in the description below for the research paper as well as the TED Talk so you can watch it all on your own. You will realize how amazing of a breakthrough they have made. Whether it's going to be possible to apply it for reality or not, this remains a mysterious question that nobody can answer sir as of today. That was it for today's episode. I hope you enjoyed learning something new. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it, subscribe to the channel to stay updated on the AI news world. And I'll see you next time with AI news episode. Take care.